guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the test server, and that is right, the Abyssal Expedition is up, guys. So we're gonna run through just a quick kind of basic guide. If this is your first time in the Abyssal Expedition, welcome to the craziness that it is. If you're a veteran as well, um, hopefully you learned something. So first thing you always have to cover is it uses martial ratings, guys. Remember, this is a little bit different um, than we've seen in the past. So if you are level 240 or below, it'll take you to 240. If you're above level 240, every 10 levels in the Resonating Crystal will give you one additional level within the Abyssal Expedition, meaning that you can have your level a little bit higher than 240 or significantly higher than 240, depending. Because we know right now the cap for the Resonating Crystal is level 800. Again, every 10 levels, you do gain one level in there. Gear, very important when it comes to the faction bonuses. So make sure that faction bonuses are equipped on your heroes, even if it's a um, different hero that you're going to be utilizing within their faction bonuses do apply to the gear. Signature items, Elder Tree, Oak Inn, all apply to the gear as well. Artifacts and Union bonuses do not apply. So I'm gonna break this down kind of a little bit different. So when you look at here, we can sort out our different classes. So here are the classes, guys. Now those are going to be the most important classes in AF or in the Abyssal Expedition and AFK Arena, of course, the classes. Um, now the classes do coincide with your Elder Tree. So if you are building a specific class, which we'll get into in just a little bit, you'd go, want to go ahead and either respect the Elder Tree or whatever you're focused on to build in the Elder Tree. Because again, this will give you a really big bonus when it comes to the Abyssal Expedition. Then you stack relics on top of it and it makes it even bigger. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get into the Expedition, guys. So here it is. We did enroll, we have 24 players on, well, it looks like 11 on the left. We got two on the right and we have zero players in the top. So I'm gonna start on the right because in our guild we do assign um, sides. The right side I am going to be on. So we'll go ahead and we will confirm the side and launch the Abyssal Expedition, guys. So here it is, day one, zoom out. Here is our map like we've seen a couple times. Ultimately, when you come into the Abyssal Expedition, first thing you wanna do is, of course, cultivate your very first tile. So the tile that you start with, you will cultivate, you'll see this little, um, this little faction symbol short shows right up on there, meaning now I have that and it does give you a bonus, guys. So when you do cultivate, it gives you a 20% blessed essence yield. For a tier one, not really a huge difference, but it does make a little bit of a difference because I went from 40 essence to 48 essence per hour, which again, makes a pretty significant deal. Now, the first thing that we're looking at is our hero selection. So you do start with two sets of heroes. When you start the Abyssal Expedition, you have zero relics, guys. That's right, we have no relics. So when you first come into the Abyssal Expedition, you want to drop in a set of heroes that you're going to be utilizing within here um, to start the Abyssal Expedition. So we can go ahead and I'm gonna go with my, I think I'm gonna go with my Eins comp. Because again, we're really only looking for the combinations that we're going to start the Abyssal Expedition. This isn't the combination that I'm going to use throughout the Abyssal Expedition. It is just going to be the start, guys. And I'm going to put some tanks in here. Um, on the test server, it's a little bit different because we don't have the primary or core heroes in here that we do to choose from when it comes to building out all of our other teams. So in here, we kind of have a team within here. We have Damon tanking, we have Rowan tanking, a um, little bit of crowd control in there as well as some damage. Here we're running kind of the um, Eron like a alt down here, which of course works exceptionally well with that team combination. We could put Lucy in here. We could put a couple different heroes in here to make sure that we have this combination that's going to work. So right now, again, we're on the test server, guys. We're just kind of checking this out. It is the casual enrollment. So there is my primary team. So once you have your primary team in here or your two core teams, um, some of the very strong team comps to use, of course, the Eins team comp, super strong to use in here. Um, the Damon team comp, very strong in here as well. Um, Lucretia team comp, very, very strong in here as well. And ultimately, this is going to be the start to the Abyssal Expedition. Now, when we expend all of our stamina, so right now we have 80 on all of these heroes. Once we go ahead and start expending that stamina, once they are exhausted, so once my stamina hits zero, 
on these heroes and I cannot progress any further with them, we are going to drop all of the heroes out of the teams that we made and we're going to put in faction or class specific heroes, excuse me, it is going to be class specific heroes. So as we're looking here at attacking, it shows you green. This is really what you wanna pay attention to when it comes to the enemy formations. So tier ones are green, they're going to be easy. We have tier two right here. It is yellow, so this is on par for probably where my heroes in here are at. So we got yellow right there. Looking at tier threes, they are red, guys. Majority of the time, you cannot come in here and take these red towns. Um, if my player level was much higher, this would actually come up as yellow when I start the Abyssal Expedition, meaning that it should be pretty easy to get. Now, the biggest difference between these tiers is when you look here, we get common relics. And then out of the tier three, we do step it up to rare relics, so on and so forth. As we get into T4s, they are still rare. But when you hit the T5s, which as you get closer to the boss, as you get more in into there, um, when you hit the tier fives, they start producing higher level relics. And as you can see, they also produce um, more essence per hour as we get into the tier twos. Now, one general rule of thumb is when you're taking your um, when you're taking your land right here, we can take 20 settlements in, in total. So when you you kind of want to leapfrog la land um, or your encampments, your villages, meaning that if I drop out this village one, I want to replace it with a village three, guys. I don't want to go one to two, two to three, three to four. You want to play the leapfrog game in here to really be successful, meaning that if I'm dropping a one, I want to take a three. If I'm dropping a three, I want to take a five, so on and so forth until you start getting up to the tier five, six, and sevens where they start getting increasingly difficult. But essentially when you start dropping out fives, you want to replace them with sevens. Um, because the land is kind of limited to the heroes we have in here, you're going to make a, um, make a conscious effort to how many lands you have in here. Because if you have one super, super strong player, they'll run out of stamina trying to kill the bosses. If you have a team of a several strong players, you will do well in the Abyssal Expedition. Looking right down here on um, this player, he has already started spreading out, which is perfect. The way you wanna go taking tier ones, taking tier twos within there, that is how you want to spread. So first thing you wanna do, well, one of the first things is looking at the map, guys. So this is where we started. This is a little bit different when it comes to this specific map because now we have a gate boss, which is right up here. There we go, guys. So we have Zafriel. In the past, there were multiple gate bosses, so you actually had to choose um, which gate you were going through depending on which boss you were choosing. So now there is a specific gate boss. So right down here, it looks like is the other boss, which... Not sure it's, it, oh, we're right here. That's why we're on the outer ring. I can't see it because it's blocked a little bit. So this little outer ring on the right side that we are, we only have one boss to choose from, which is perfect. We know everyone is going towards that boss. So a good thing is to make a connecting line with all of your other players to push to that very first boss. So starting progression here, I'm gonna move up this way with my attacking just because I want to move up to the boss that we have right up here, which is the one everyone up to the north will go to the south, everyone to the south of here will actually go up to the north and they will converge on here. Another thing you wanna remember is if you break the lines, so you'll actually see after a little bit of time, you'll have lines through this whole entire thing where people have taken encampments. You don't wanna leave players behind and you don't wanna get left behind because it will cost you a ton of stamina to go ahead and catch up when it comes to being left behind. Now, we're gonna get into the attacking here. With it being green, this is going to be relatively easy. This is what we have to fight. They all do have um, level one relics right now. So we can go ahead and attack, and then we can set our formation in here. You can see the power there. And also we have this little symbol. During battles, allied heroes have multiple attributes increased as a result of Dura's blessing and shall receive 20% more damage against bosses. These are not bosses, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and drop our team in here. And you know what, we'll go with Roman Eins because I like that combination a lot. Um, we'll go with Soros so he can kind of tank up here and maybe just a throw. So looking at, I am almost double the damage here or, or double the combat rating. 
I probably don't need to put this many heroes in here. Um, you can actually run it with a less amount. So if you go in here, fighting in the Abyssal Expedition requires stamina, selecting exit or try again will cost you one stamina, guys. So you want to make sure, slow it down right off the bat. If a hero dies, you lose one stamina that you can get it, or two stamina you can get in return. If you don't beat the team within 30 seconds, you can lose another point of stamina. So looking there, we got all three stars here. So breaking it down, defeating all enemies gave us one or two stamina back. Defeating all enemies within 30 seconds gave us an additional two stamina back. Do not lose any hero. If a hero would have died, I would have lost that other third star and I would have lost two stamina with that. So a lot of times um, you can go ahead and if a hero dies relatively early, you can go ahead and reset the formation. Um, but you do, it does cost you one stamina every time that you reset the formation. Now skipping the rest timer will actually allow my land just to not have a timer on it. If I put the timer in there, it will provide a timer. We're going to go ahead and of course it is going to choose by the faction. So this is looking for the Mauler faction. This is looking for um, elite or higher. So we can go ahead and put a hero in there so we get our bonus. Now we're up to 96 stamina an hour and it makes a big difference when you get in 20 of your lands. So again, we're going to continue progressing up here. Chances of us taking this are pretty slim because it is um, elite. They do have the level two relics, which we'll look at right now. So the blessed relics, this is really what is the game changer within the Abyssal Expedition, guys. Like we talked about a little bit ago, you do have the five classes down here. So we have our warriors, we have our tanks, we have our rangers, we have our casters, and we have our support down here. You are going to focus on one single class and one single class only. Now, the reason for this is you want to stack and build relics as much as possible, as soon as possible, and building only one class at a time is very, very efficient. Now, out of all five classes, there are really three that you want to focus on or that you want to do as your primary choices. Um, either doing the celerity tree, doing the sorcery tree, or doing the might tree are the three primary focuses when you go through the Abyssal Expedition that we've seen in the past. A lot of players or some have went ahead and tried doing the tanking tree, um, tried doing the substance tree um, or the support tree. Hasn't worked as well. One of the big advantages, if you are relatively new to the Abyssal Expedition, is the Celerity Tree has all of your dodge heroes. So as you're continuing to stack relics and buy relics in here, um, you do have several heroes in here that have a multiplication factor when it comes to dodge. And stacking dodge in here makes it very easy. Celerity is by far the easiest class to play within the Abyssal Expedition, especially if you're relatively new. Sor sorcery or the mage um, class works really well, but it does take a significant amount, um, a, a big investment and a significant amount of investment um, to not get run over because these heroes do not have the dodge that the celerity ha heroes have, which sometimes makes it a lot more difficult. And then the warrior class, similar to the, the caster class, um, not as much dodge, not stacking dodge like we see with the celerity tree. It can work, but a lot of these heroes are really specific to the boss killing comps um, that we'll build later on in the, the Abyssal Expedition. So again, starting off with the easiest class is right here, guys, starting with Celerity and building up the Celerity tree, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So once equipped, it is permanently bound, and there we go, guys. So now this raises our attack by 38K, defense by 10K, accuracy, and of course, our insight by a significant amount. You can see the totals in here and then level two, three, and four unlocks additional bonuses when it comes to the celerity class in particular. And the other reason you really wanna focus on just one specific tree at a time is those bonuses. So as you get to level two, as you get to level three, um, it makes a very big difference with the ability to burn out and kill team comps very fast. So looking here, it is still in red, even though I stacked one blessed relic, it is still coming up as red, meaning we cannot, more than likely, we cannot take this village. Um, we can actually try the tier three village. And the way that I'm gonna do it, even though it says difficult, is we're going to go right into the Slarity, since I know that's the only heroes 
that we have the um, the items for. So essentially, but looking at the damage deficiency, we're gonna give it one single try, guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and stack this in here as well. Slow down the battle again because we don't want to leave. We don't want to lose. So I was hoping the pull would do more. So we lost Eron. And see right there, we're just going to exit the battle. Tier threes right now are too tough for me to defeat. So similar to down here, we can pick up a couple more tier ones. We can pick up a couple of tier twos. We can also fight the battles with less than the optimal heroes, guys. So what I mean by that is looking in here. So we have the three pull. We could actually stack this. Take out two heroes, save our stamina on three and five, dropping out both of those heroes. Um, take some of the tiles with just less than the, the ideal amount of heroes. Because with the relics, when you get one or two relics on here, um, it makes it a lot easier. But the one thing you want to make sure is the timer, guys. If you're burning way past the timer, you're, you're kind of, kind of going to miss on getting those um, stamina back. So here we are on the timer, we're good, we're good with the heroes. So that'll be a three star victory right there. We'll get six of our stamina back that we used, which is perfect out of the 12. Boom, we only had to use three heroes in there and now we're stacking more of our um, essence up there. So taking tier one, taking tier two, again, based on the resonating crystal, the level of the resonating crystal, you could take some tier threes right off the bat and then we'll go ahead and collect those, taking more lands and building that out. In addition, guys, this is the quest portion of the Abyssal Expedition. So right now, I am currently ranked a squire, obtain one tile within the Lush Plain. We did occupy three settlements of tier one, which we did. Blessed Essence will just take time. Acquire three ordinary blessed relics. We got one, which was Celerity. Occupy a tier two or higher and own three cultivated settlements. The cultivated settlements is when you're adding your hero into the settlement itself. So once we do hit this, then we can raise our rank to Knight. Then this gives you um, additional benefits. You get a tile limit increase. You do get a relic, relic level cap increase, and you can also use more heroes. So looking in here, the rest of these slots are all locked until I do raise my rank. So the faster that you can raise your title or raise your rank within the Abyssal Expedition, the faster you're going to be able to create essence, meaning you're going to get more blessed relics out of there and you're gonna be able to take more of the stronger towns. Now, military honors, it looks like this is where the loot is going to be. Um, and it looks like this one, you can actually buy a premium pass. So very interesting change here, um, but they added a pay to win function to the Abyssal Expedition. So similar to what we've seen to the last event with Mahira skin, um, you can actually get some free scrolls out of here. So they're giving you a little bit more of a benefit so reach square, we got 100 points there. So we can collect those up. The pass is probably, well, $14.99 is what I'm assuming. Um, if you unlock all these, you could get a little bit of bonus loot there, which is pretty cool, which 10 red chests. Wow, that's actually pretty good for the value. If it's all the way down getting 10 red chests, that, that's quite a quite a bit um, out of there to, to level that up. Um, with those seven. So you get 70 red chests, 10 stargazer cards, 600 elemental shards, 300 elemental cores, which is a pretty good deal for the premium pass overall, but we are completely free to play on here. So the military honors is in there as well. Now, communication guys, chat right here. These are all the players that have joined the militia. A lot of players take chat in here. A lot of players do put chat in discord um, to go ahead and build it. Militia, it just shows you where they're at, who is online, and where their power is at. So right now, um, exactly where your power is at. Heartsdale, it looks like number one. I think once you get to a certain rank, you'll be in charge of the Abyssal Expedition, I think is how it works, if you had a certain rank between a cer before a certain time. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take all of our lands here. We're gonna get set. The, the initial setup with the Abyssal Expedition does take a little bit of time. Um, what I personally do is log on twice a day, you know, roughly twice a day, collect up your loot, do some movement tiles. Um, you have stamina on your heroes because once you burn through the stamina that is on your current heroes, um, you, you want to make sure when you're out of stamina that you just wait. It does take a considerable amount of time to build up more stamina because you only get, I believe it is four per 
four per so many hour. I'm not sure if they changed it here. It used to say, so that might be a little bit different, but they recover in three hours right now. So the stamina might be a little bit different in here. We're still yet to see. So guys, that is pretty much the rundown of the Vault of Time, the Abyssal Expedition. This is the fifth one that we have done, guys. So very cool um, to go ahead and start in here. We're gonna come up with a couple more videos as we do a little bit of progression. That way you guys can kind of follow and see the progression as we get through it. Um, that way when the Abyssal Expedition comes up on the global servers or when it goes live, you can actually have a much easier time getting through there. So guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.